Hey guys, I'm back here with the flashing camera build. So I got this tool steel sleeve machine down and just kind of show you kind of the mechanism that I designed. And I had it done because my lathe won't fit any of this in the, the chuck. So <clears throat> this is the hammer and rod. <clears throat> I have the blue die on it to, I'm gonna have to cut it and I wanted it long, but this is all turned down to the diameter of my dies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all my dies like this. It has a 13, 16 shank, shank same as uh, Chicago pneumatics, and then it has its three quarter long. So what's gonna happen, it'll get bored in. I'll have to make another pair of thumbnail dies so it'll just sit flush. And then I've got a quick push pin that will go inside. So what I ended up doing is when I gave it to a friend of mine that's a machinist, he indicated center and he put in this. We drilled it and we put in a bronze brass bushing. So <clears throat> this is the main shaft. And I didn't want to use tubing because tubing would make it echo. So solid's going to be more, you know, soundy. So this right here is the cylinder. And you can do it in multiple ways. Since my machine that I'm building is only at, uh, two inches wide, I couldn't go any wider. Like I did on the English wheel, I actually inserted like a, a nut plug that goes inside and bolted in. So this one here, what we ended up doing, same theory as the English wheel design. So if you guys are building an English wheel, you just gotta amp up the size and then I would put a nut in the English wheel. This one I didn't. So what I'm gonna show you. So what we did is he machined this out. He machined this 5 16 groove for a shoulder bolt. That's for that bolt that I showed you in that other shaft. So he came up two and a half inches and he cut an acne thread in there. So there's a true acne thread two and a half inches up. Okay, the rest of it's a bore. So when I put this in, nice snug fit. It won't fall down the bottom, so everything has to get inserted through the top. What I did is I bought that handle for a, a lathe or a mill from McMaster Car. I machined out the inside and I turned down the acne thread and basically like that. So now it has a set screw. What I ended up doing is when I gave it to him, he machined this one down to fit the bushing. This here is going to be a jam nut, and it's very simple, and this is how an English wheel works too. So if you guys are building an English wheel, this is what makes the mechanism go up, and then the gravity takes it down. So now that I've got all this kind of centered, I'm going to put in my 5 16th shoulder bolt. Okay, and that's what's going to keep this thing from spinning side to side. In the machine, once these dies go on and it has the three quarter shank, as you can see this one, this one has the hole, I have some push pins. They're made by Jorgensen. They're pretty cool pins. So this is what we call push pins. We use them in the race car industry. But what happens, it's gonna go all the way through this and into this. There's no load whatsoever on this pin. I machine it down to where this is sitting flat. This is this surface is machine or sitting flat. So when you put this in, all this is doing is locking it in the shaft to where it can't spin. But it also acts as another thing is the vibration. It's gonna to want to come back up on the planishing hammer. This is what's gonna hold it down. I have two of these, one on top, one on bottom. Pretty cool little deal. Has little balls in there, so if you wanna change the die, you pull it out, drop the die, replace the other one. Those pins aren't cheap. Um, for two of them, that size is 50 bucks. So <clears throat> this nut is just a jam nut. So what we're gonna do is after I Kind of put out where I'm going to weld it on and stuff like that. I'm going to end up cutting off the access. So the way I did that is I ran this all the way up. That's the highest I want to be. 
So I ran it all the way up. As you can see, it's still in the cylinder. And it's all vertical load, no side load. What's gonna happen is when this is welded on, that's my highest point. So I've got a I've got all the measurements. So this this one will go in here. No, I take it back. This one will go, yeah, in the bottom. This one goes in the top on the hammer. So together these are three quarters of an inch. Total is an inch and a half. So I've got a I've already did the inch and a half measurement. So when I cut it, I'll have a gap like that. So I can pull out these dies because I've got a total of two and a half inch here. You guys can design this however you want. But I, I, can, I made it to where I could pull these dies out and swap them out with this all welded in. Then, when I go to swap it out, I just drop it. It keeps all this in line, which is a pretty cool little piece. So, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I mean, it's a, like I said, I'm kind of infatuated with metal. I mean, nothing looks prettier than that. When it goes in the machine, I'll grab the camera. I'm kind of limp right, limp footed right now. Kind of problem with my foot, but I'm going to show you guys. So it's going in my channel. Right there. And this piece will obviously go in the groove but I have to hold it up because the shaft's too long. So as you can see, I can still get everything there and it's gonna be a nice piece when it's done. And then what I did alter, what I did alter, so I did have a stainless line running all the way and I figured I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some vibration. So I used some some race car dash six hose and fittings. So this is the only piece of hose I have, just in case this kind of was to move or slide or whatever. Connected it with a, a double nipple union, and then I made my stainless line go from there. So the vibration of the hammer itself can flex in this hose, and then it won't fatigue. And <clears throat> Another thing that I did, I took my original hammer head when I came up with this design, and I was gonna make a bunch of shanks that fit in this hammer, and then I said, I'm gonna have too many, um, too many upper dies, and that's what I didn't want. So what I did is I created the female slot, and all I did was machine a, like a ring, and I put a pin through it. So I'm gonna show you. So this is obviously goes on the bottom die, but it could go on the top if you want. But as you can see, the two holes are gonna line up, and it just goes in there like so. So if I want to change dies, instead of pulling out this whole hammer, I pull out just the die itself, put whatever die I want in there, and then put my pins back in. So if you guys are building a planishing hammer, uh, don't kind of, another tool, well, don't, don't just kind of just build it one way, is really think about what you're doing, because I'm trying to make this universal as possible and as quick as possible to swap out dies when I need to do when I need to use certain dies. The only manufacturer that I've found that actually has something similar to this is a jet tool on the cheaper planishing hammers. And they have something like this, it's made out of one piece and it accepts their dies like this. Bailey tools and somebody else on their cheaper planishing hammers, they don't have no pins. It's just a hammer up here and they're using like a, a normal air trigger gun and it has the spring and it's just a 401 shank. So, I just kind of want to share this with you guys. Uh, I'm kind of down for a couple days, and then I'm leaving for the car shows and you know, for two weeks. So, I'm just trying to get well before I have to be on my feet again. Um, but I, I hope this guy, this kind of inspires you guys to kind of start building your own tools because I'm a firm believer if you build them, you know, build your own tools, they're, you know exactly how they work, and when something goes wrong, you know exactly how to fix them. Um, I did that with my English wheel. I've done that with my bead roller. I know the ins and outs of them, and I'm gonna know the ins and outs of this planishing hammer. But as you guys can see, I mean, that's a pretty cool little piece, I think. Um, but I think it's gonna work well, and 
I hope that you guys are kind of following along. But I think it's a, it's definitely, this is a universal style. Obviously you'll go in a different diameter, but my English wheel at the bottom that lifts and lowers, that's the same thing. So you just gotta, you know, make the size bigger. But this definitely is the trick. The slot, a lot of English wheels, like JS Tools and English and Lasley's wheel, they put this on the inside of the throat. So it faces that way. So you don't see it on the outside, but that keeps that your shaft from spinning. And then my pin that I'll put in, my push pin, that'll keep the die from spinning. So everything will be true because on these thumbnail dies, they have to be perfectly mated. If they're out of time, it's not gonna hammer right. So I hope you guys like this video. You guys stay tuned. If you're not a follower, go over there to my channel and subscribe. I, I mean, not only do I do cars and stuff like that, I build tools. And some of these tools can set you back a pretty penny. And that's why I've started building a lot of mine. You know, um, that English wheel, I'm in at 1500 bucks, not counting the anvils. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot cheaper to build them if you know how. But I'm a firm believer too in American made and there's only certain companies out there that I would actually buy from because it's an American made. And I take pride in what I do and that's like the American dream. So hope you guys like this video, you guys stay tuned and uh, go over there and uh, like my page if you, if you haven't already. But here's, there's a good shot right there of quite a bit of the tools that I've just built. So you guys stay tuned and uh, I'll see you guys in another video.